Joining me now is Senator John Tester. He is the only Democrat elected to statewide office in Montana. In 2020, Donald Trump carried Montana by more than 16 points. In 2012, the last election when Tester was on the ballot with the presidential campaign, Tester was able to run ahead of Barack Obama by seven percentage points. Senator John Tester, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good to be with you, Chuck. Thank you. All right. So I guess on a scale of one to ten, a complete shock or this is just another day at the office. Uh, where, where do you put the cinema changing our party affiliation to independent? Uh, look, I was surprised she made the, the change, but uh, functionally, I don't think that change is a thing. I think we're uh, going to continue doing the same thing that we were doing, whether she's an independent or part of the Democratic caucus, because she's going to continue to caucus with the Democrats. So we'll still have uh, the committee mm -hmm. uh, structures that we've had before as far as having one more Democrat. And uh, functionally, I don't think it changes a thing. Um, and and I then that's a good thing. So we, we look forward to working. I look forward to working with her as I have in mm -hmm. the past uh, to try to get good things done for the country. I want to talk about that relationship. Look, Arizona Democrats uh, do not are not happy with her at all. I want to just run down some of the critiques. The state party chair said she answers to corporations and billionaires, not Arizonans. The executive rare of Lucha, uh, a local organization down there, called it another unfortunate selfish act. You have uh, a progressive political consultant based in Phoenix, Ian Danley, saying everything she's done has been in service of Kirsten Cinema. Is that your experience working with her? No, look, uh, I had a good experience working with Kristen on a number of different topics, especially the bipartisan infrastructure uh, package that we put together with uh, 10 folks, five Democrats, five Republicans, of which I was one of the Democrats, and she was too. We worked hard together, we argued, uh, and we fought, and we came up with a pretty darn good bill. And I think that's the process, Chuck. You know that. Your enemy one day is your friend tomorrow, and vice versa. And it's about keeping relationships in Washington, D.C., if you're going to get things done. And I think that uh, Kristen Sinema knows that, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, whether she's a Democrat or she's a Republican, that really doesn't matter. The label doesn't matter. What matters is you got to have somebody in Washington, D.C. that wants to get things done and move things forward. We certainly have enough obstructionists in Washington, right. D.C. So, uh, look, I think she's got a pretty good track record of getting things done. Has she been perfect on everything from my perspective? No. But, but I haven't been perfect yeah. from her perspective either. So I think you just work together, you do things, and, and, uh, and move the country forward. And I think that's what we did last Congress. Let me ask you this, though. You know, you and her basically share the same position on the filibuster. Yet she was vilified for it. You have not. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, I, w I was for going back to the days of Mr. Smith goes to Washington filibuster where people talked and could hold the floor for weeks on end if they want. But in the end, it was a, it was a simple majority vote after the people got done with a talking filibuster. I think she had a different view, okay. uh, but, but I can't remember exactly what that view was on that. Right, but it's more similar. You're not for just getting rid of the filibuster completely the way many of your no. colleagues are, correct? Mm -hmm. No, uh, that is absolutely correct. I think the filibuster does serve an important purpose, uh, and it certainly uh, is one of the things that makes the Senate different in the House, and thank God for that. But you, do you think there are even 48 votes for your position in the Senate? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I think as with any uh, piece of legislation or any policy or any rules reform, it's about explaining to folks, and by the way, I think this has to be done in a bipartisan way and, and, and explain to folks about how this is going to make the Senate work better. I have always believed that uh, uh, if you're going to obstruct, you have to put some skin in the game, and I don't think right now uh, uh, folks who obstruct put any skin in the game. They can, they can, uh, they can object, and they can walk away, and they can go home, and some of them have. And, and I think it's more important that, uh, that they work at their obstruction. Uh, and look, if I want to obstruct a bill, I'm more than willing to do that. Uh, I'm willing to go down and hold the floor and get people with the same opinion to hold the floor with me. That puts leadership in a heck of a bind when it comes to the filibuster. Right. And so I think it does still keep minority rights, which is what the filibuster is about. You know, you're, you actually vote less with Joe Biden than Kirsten Sinema does. Um, you're comfortable being a Democrat in Montana. Why is that? 
Look, I'm, I'm also a farmer, and I can tell you that uh, we would not have the farm today if it was not for the uh, democratic politics of FDR. And uh, my grandfather uh, and grandmother talked to us about that. My folks talked to me about that. And I will tell you that I am forever grateful for that because I'm blessed to be a farmer. Uh, I love agriculture, and I wouldn't be one without the Democrats. Well, I say that because, you know, the que I'm sure you're going to get a lot of questions in Montana. Hey, why don't you leave the party? And you think that's going to be a good enough answer for that middle-of-the-road voter that you need to win? I think what we need to focus on is what we've accomplished, whether it's for veterans, infrastructure, bringing jobs back to this country. Uh, the list is long. We've been, I've been able to do a lot of good things working with other people in a bipartisan way in the United States Senate, working for small businesses and working families and family farm agriculture. That's what I'm going to be talking about as a record of accomplishment if I choose to run. And if we're able to do that and get that message out effectively, I will win as I have won in the past. If, uh, if we're not effective in right. that, of course, then it's going to be a different outcome. But I feel, if, you know, if, if I decide to run in this thing, and it'll be a discussion that I have with my family over the holidays because right. it is a big undertaking, um, I feel good about my chances. People are going to come after me. They've come after me in the past. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that's politics, and, uh, and, and we'll get through it and, uh, and hopefully be successful uh, come uh, November of 2024. Before I move on to this topic, um, do you want to see Senator Sinema reelected? Look, I, I, that's a choice for the Arizona voters, number one. And, and number two, I certainly have no bones to pick with Kristen Sinema. Uh, I think she's, she's served uh, this country well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and look, it, it will be a choice. Uh, you know, elections are about choices. Right. And uh, the Arizona people are going to have a choice. Whether it's now, whether it's a Democrat, an independent, or a Republican that represents them in the United States Senate, yeah. along with Senator Kelly. And, uh, and they'll make that call based on uh, the same, probably the same kind of information they will in any state in the union. Yeah, do you think Democratic leadership ought to give her some dem deference, the way they give Angus King deference? Uh, I mean, sure, I think they ought to tr try to treat everybody equally, for sure. Um, and I, I don't know that Angus King gets deference. Uh, well, they don't feel the Democrat. They don't fund a, a Democratic candidate does a really out there. Good job. Yeah, they don't fund a Democrat, official Democrat in Maine. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean that that may be that may be the case. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of that. But the truth is, is that uh, Angus does a great job and uh, deserves to be reelected in Maine. And uh, one of my favorite people in the Senate, as a matter of fact, I really like this guy. He's done a great job and brings a great tool set to the to the Senate. And and I think that's what it's based on more than yeah. uh, anything else. It's 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 how you performed. Uh, are you a team player? Are you working together? Are you working to move the country forward? And uh, they'll, they'll make that call. I, I can't say. I mean, that's really a call for the next uh, chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. I want to talk to you a little bit about the midterms overall. Um, I've had you on here to talk about yes. Democrats and rural voters. I've got to show you this number. You know, when you were yep. last up for re-election, Democrats didn't get clobbered in rural America. In 2018, they, they got 42 percent of the vote. Republicans got 56 percent. That is a competitive landscape. It's why you won re-election. In 2022, a year that Democrats are claiming was a pretty good year, the split in rural America, Senator, 63-34. Democrats got clobbered in rural America. They only lucked out that turnout in rural America wasn't that great. Um, what's got to change here? We got to focus our message more on the things we're doing for rural America. Um, I'll give you a prime example. I've got a couple bills that deal with big packers and meat consolidation and how the market, I believe, is totally manipulated. And, and if we can get those bills through, it'll allow for folks that are cow-calf operators to be able to make a living. If we're able to do that this Congress, Democrats will have done that. And hopefully there will be Republicans, and I'm sure there will be, as a matter of fact, because we've got Chuck Grassley on board and others, mm -hmm. to get some of these bills across the line. And, and, but we need to talk about it. And, and we don't talk about near enough. The infrastructure package is a prime example. Mm -hmm. It's going to help rural America big time when it comes to broadband and, and electrical distribution and, and roads and bridges. We didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it from a rural perspective. It has to be a concentrated effort. And we are very bad uh, at message, and we need to work at that and get that message out to rural America so rural America knows who's fighting for them. And, and I think it's across the board. And, uh, 
Uh, and if we're able to do that and do that effectively, Chuck, uh, you'll see those numbers change. Uh, I want to get to two uh, issues, one that's pretty pressing here in the lame duck, the issue of the debt ceiling. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said yes. he wants to raise it with uh, a bipartisan majority. I get that desire. Um, but if you guys punt the debt ceiling issue, this lame duck, and Republicans use it to hold the economy hostage, to hold Biden hostage, what do you want to do? Isn't the blame on Democrats right now for not dealing with this problem, even though it may be a one-party vote? No. This is, uh, this is an insane situation we're in, in that we're simply paying the bills like you would your credit card bill or your housing uh, payment you make to buy your house. For Republicans or anybody to hold up the debt ceiling vote is political uh, malpractice. Mm -hmm. uh, it will raise interest rates across the board. We saw it happen the last time this was just talked about. And, and, and you cannot expect to be able to compete with a place like China, who's looking to replace us as an economic power in the, in the world, mm -hmm. if we're going to have these silly fights over debt ceiling. And they're silly fights. Uh, look, if this is going to be the case, we ought to just change it. And when you vote for the bill, the debt ceiling vote goes right with it. So the right. bill goes up or Would down. Would you just eliminate it at this point? If that's what we're going to do. Well, I think, what, truthfully, that we can do just what I said, or we could let the president do it right. with an override of, a, say, a two-thirds margin from, right. the, from the Congress. But, but the truth is, to have this fight and hold the country hostage over something that truly could be very damaging to the economy of this country yeah. is nothing short of ridiculous. And it's why people don't like Democrats, they don't like Republicans, and they don't like Congress. This is a silly fight to be having. Speaking of, of, of uh, perhaps not liking Congress when they find out how many uh, members of Congress took crypto money, let me ask you this. You, you've used some colorful language to describe crypto. You're not alone here. But should the government be regulating it or banning it? Um, look, I, I, one or the other. I mean, I, I have not, it's not been able to pass the smell test for me. Um, I, I have not been able to find anybody who's been able to explain to me what's there other than synthetics um, and uh, what means nothing. Air. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and the problem is, is that if we regulate it, and I pointed this out to some of the regulators here a week or two ago, if we regulate it, it, it may give it uh, the ability of people to think it's real. Uh, I, think, I think it's... Uh, you know, truth be known, my personal thought, and I'm not a regulator and I'm not a financial uh, person that does regulation, but I see no reason why this stuff should exist. Yeah. I really don't. I, I, I get that. And finally, on the prisoner exchange, Victor Boot for Brittany Griner, um, what is your level of concern that this was a successful tactic for Putin? Well, look, I think any time we can get a, an American out of jail uh, that's uh, in uh, prison improperly, I think we all ought to celebrate that. Um, I think people can always say, well, we should have got more or we shouldn't have done the deal at all. Uh, in the end, I can tell you the, uh, for a fact that the State Department continues to negotiate uh, for the release of other Americans that are out there. But I think in Brittany Geiner's case, we ought to say, um, good for Brittany Griner. I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her family. I'm happy for America. And, uh, and we need to continue to work to get the other folks out, too. All right. Senator John Tester, Democrat from Montana. Always uh, great to get your perspective on things. Uh, I'm curious, what do you think Governor John Dutton's doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's out causing problems, I'm telling you. There you go. We'll find out more tonight. <laughs> I'll be honest right. with you. Uh, sounds good. All right. Uh, of course, referring to Yellowstone's, of course, fictional governor there, Senator John Tester.